the reason we're doing this show, this younger image reality show, is to actually tell the people out there that plastic surgery is an idea of a better version of you. Welcome to The Younger Image Show, starring Dr. Jamal Yousafi and his lovely wife, Nurse Asha, who have come together, overcoming all hardships, to bring their dream and passion in plastic and cosmetic surgery to the beautiful town of Vienna in the DMV area. I've, throughout these past 22 years, I've seen patients, because of one small procedure, they've changed their entire lifestyle. Right now, I'm going through a uh, separation from my husband, so him having a girlfriend and cheating on me kind of affected my self-esteem. Ooh, I don't want to cry. <laughs> um, back in November of last year, um, it really affected me because one day I woke up and I could not walk. I really decided to get the surgery because I was so paranoid about my the bags underneath my eyes. Like About five years ago, I had had an upper facelift, which left me a little fuller on one side than the other side. I always wanted to become a surgeon, not only a physician, but, but a surgeon. There was a war going on in the city where you live. It was really tough for my parents because they, <clears throat> they were left alone. Well, that's, that's the bad part, I can't say it nicely. <laughs> She's had a very tough life. And she's been so strong through it all. is a pizza that has a nice crust, you know, like fluffy. Together, they invite you to take a closer, more deeper look into the world of cosmetic and plastic surgery, where their goal is to educate people and help them gain a more confident, more perfected version of themselves. And along with their amazing team of professionals, we will see them in action, helping people beat this horrible stigma. A dog and never gets a chance to show my worth Picking up the pieces of a broken heart you think I learned I'm at the mercy of a love that never says that I'm enough So somehow I always Charisma Saunders and 43 years old. Um, I'm the oldest out of six kids. Um, for a living, what I do is um, I work for Geico. I'm a, um, a insurance agent, so I do customer service for homeowners insurance. And um, also, um, I take care of like I have like again I have two kids that have medical needs, so I um, take care of them full time. And so does and my 23-year-old daughter. She stays with me and she helps me to take care of them. So the story behind my plastic surgery is, so for me, the procedure to um, could mentally affect my life is because I suffer from depression and by, I actually have take medication for it and um, bipolar. So um, right now I'm going through a separation from my husband. So him having a girlfriend and cheating on me kind of affected my self-esteem. So um, that, that's kind of a big factor 
in it to the fact that he, even after he found out I was getting this done, he was like, well, you're going to look funny. So I'm doing, like I told him, I'm doing it for me. So his opinion doesn't matter or whatever. It's basically so I'm comfortable when I go out the door with how I look or whatever and not being told that I, um, I have a stomach or something doesn't look right on me or whatever. I just want the confidence booster back. I want to look like I did before I got married. I'm like, you left me after I had six kids, but I can look like I didn't have six kids again. So. Yeah, and I wasn't able to. That's what it is. I know. I told. I could smell it on the other doctor. I was like, you had coffee this night. He's like, yeah, I did. And I was drinking coffee, so I put it over there. I figure I'm 43, going on 44, six kids. I deserve it at this point. I mean, I spend my money taking care of my kids, and I really don't put a lot of money into myself or doing anything for me. So I just wanted to do something for me while uh, right now I can afford to. So I was like, why not do it? Okay, so what I'm gonna do is to mark you and then I'll take a picture of the marking. Because after today, obviously we can't take any before pictures. We can always take after, but before it's good to have a nice shape and all that stuff. So I did have a question about getting a, cause my mom and my daughter says I really don't need my breasts done. They said there's nothing wrong with my boobs. That I should get my hips and my butt rounded off. I think it's necessary. I think it is necessary to make a better version of ourselves if that's what you want. I don't think that you should base it on what other people think of you. But if you or you're not comfortable with yourself and you want to improve yourself, then yeah, I'll, I'm like yes. I think it's a necessity to for you to walk out the door and be comfortable with the way you look. Yes, I did. So it'll be just it's four. just like a little half of a uh, cup or something. And I think you do need some of it. Right here, right yeah. here. More here than yeah. here. So if I have some extras, we could do both. Yeah, I agree. You have this little... The, my, yeah, the hip dip. Yeah. I, I okay. want my hips rounded. We can do it. Let's do it. Because after today, it's going to be tough to find the, the fat for it. I think a reality show showing... Um, uh, reality showing, showing cosmetic surgery and stuff, the younger image or whatever, I think it's a good idea because it lets people see the beginning, like what people are thinking before they go have the surgery and then um, and how nervous you are and stuff like that and the process um, of which it took to go through it and stuff like that and the thought process behind it and then um, if you get reviewed, after, you get interviewed after it shows if you're satisfied with your procedure and the results from your procedure. Good. And you have a C-section scar, yeah. so I'm going to go very low. Okay. So usually we go right up here, but I want to go a little bit lower. You see, we could go all the way to the back, obviously, but obviously we're not going to do that. But well, which one? Cutting. Because oh. you see, loose skin goes all the way back. But I'm going to do just liposuction of your size, not cutting. Okay. I feel like cosmetic surgery is basically a, um, it's a confidence booster to get it done because you, even though most people think you're doing it so, to, to make other people look at you a different way, you're not because it's not what, when I put on my pants and my jeans and a uh, girdle, I look fine. You would never know I had a, a gut. Most people think I'm smaller than what I am when I got my clothes on because I wear hoodies and skinny jeans and stuff like that. But it's what I feel like when I took my clothes off that matters and when I take my clothes off I want to be comfortable with my body and I don't want to have to wear a girdle to put on a tight fitted dress even though I can I want to be able to put my clothes on and just go like most people do or whatever so it's a confidence booster for myself so yeah I think a reality show is good to show what people go through and why why they chose to do what they're doing or whatever because not everybody does it because they want to be a video star you want to get rid of a little bit of the bulge here right here liposuction in here a little bit for you See, you have a little pooch. You see what I'm talking about? Bless you. You see you have a like a little shelf here? Oh yeah, I have oh. a shelf. Here. <laughs> I think we should get rid of it. It will look nicer. Okay. Because the whole idea is to make the buttock a little bit rounder. Okay. A lot of people like when you have kids and life happens, you don't have the time to exercise or to work out consistently like some people that don't have kids do because my neighbor across the street, her kids are grown. She goes to the gym every day, literally. She doesn't work, her husband does. I don't have the luxury not to have a job, so I don't have the luxury not to work. So I think the necessity is if you want the results, you see people that can go to the gym every day and stuff like that and 
And even after you go to the gym, you have extra skin because I'm getting a tummy tuck. So you have the extra skin and stuff and you can't, the, even working out is not going to get rid of my flabby stomach after I work out. It's still going to be there. So the necessity is to fix the stuff that um, working out can't fix. Like the extra, the excessive skin that you have and stuff like that and, and the time that you want it done or whatever because everybody doesn't have the same amount of time in a day that everybody else has. So. Anyways, right? Uh, yeah, I know my butt is big, but I also have a husband that likes my butt. <laughs> <laughs> um, the advice that I have for people that are considering getting it like me is that make sure it's something that you want and that you're not basing it on somebody else's decision and make sure that you pick the right doctor. Very good. Okay, let me tell the anesthesia lady to give you the medications that she was saying. born in Iran uh, in a big family. I come from a family of 12, two parents and 10 siblings. I used to spend a lot of time with my uh, mom. So I remember one time uh, during the summer time, for some reason our refrigerator was actually was on the second floor and the kitchen was on the first floor. So anyways, my mom told me that uh, take this bottle and then take it upstairs, put it in the refrigerator so we have cold uh, water. As I was very excited. I was so proud that my mom has given me this uh, chore to do. So I grabbed the bottle and I was just jumping up and down and then going up the stairs. So I just fell and the glass broke, went into my arm. And actually at that time I was just a tiny like five-year-old or something, which I still have this scar. The scar is about this much, which I simulated on when I was a kid. It was like twice the size. But anyways, I was so mesmerized by the, by the meat that was coming out, two white pieces of meat were coming and blood was gushing out. And interesting enough, I didn't have any pain. So I was just looking at this and uh, mesmerized by it. So I went and showed it to my mom and mom, my mom said, oh my God, we have to go to the hospital. And that was my first uh, memory of going to the hospital and I was so amazed by the uh, care that I got in the hospital or I was the center of attention. I don't know, for whatever it was. So when I left the operating room, and when I left the hospital, I said, this is what I'm going to be. I had no idea what the title was, but interesting enough, I said, that's what I was. Getting ready to start the next case. This nice lady that uh, has been very uh, patient in terms of doing her uh, tummy tuck. She's had pregnancies before and she's done. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, do some liposuction, the 360 lipo to give her a better curve on the sides and then get rid of that loose muscle and the loose skin. Go ahead and tighten that up. And then uh, with the fat that we get out of this, add a little bit to the breast. She has a big asymmetry of the breast, so we're gonna add more to her left. And also she has that hip dip, uh, the trochanteric area that is a little bit of uh, depression, so we're gonna give her a nice curve. Right now she actually has two bulges and then a depression. So we're planning to give her those two bulges and add some fat to that depression to give her a better smoother curve. So I'm excited for her too. This would be very nice. So this is skin over here. All of this is going to uh, go away. So since it's going to be taken out, I'm making multiple incisions here to be able to have more access. All right, so you see the bulge right here and here, and she has a little bulge here. So we're gonna get rid of these to give her a better curve. All right. So if you remember at the beginning, she had a lot of uh, bulge in here 
and another bulge here and a divot here. So you see you have a nice curve right there. And I'm gonna go ahead and do a little bit of more suctioning in this area. She has a little loose skin. Let's see if I can help her out with uh, contracting the skin. And then later on, you see all that loose skin that you see here? We're gonna go ahead and cut all of that to give her a nicer, tighter belly. And that's the tummy tuck portion, which is going to make the biggest difference for her. All right, so we finished uh, with the procedure, as you saw, part of it. Um, everything went well, she looks great. We got rid of the uh, fat, the 360 areas, gave her a nicer curve. Uh, the area that had a little dip, we added some fat and got rid of the excess skin in here, tightened up the muscle, gave her a new belly button, which in a way, it was her own belly button, but we just brought it out through new skin. So when we get rid of the bottom part, you know, all that excess skin, when we get rid of it, then we could use the excess skin from the top and we brought it down as you, as you saw. You are like a superstar in nothing bringing you down. You can do everything. She now focus on your dream. If you can think it, you can. All right. Hi, how are you doing? Hi. Hey, how are you? Hi, how are you? So you're surviving, right? Yes. All right. So go ahead and stand up. Maybe you can use this. I don't know if you're going to see that. But this is good. You know, starting to get a nice curve in here too. Mm -hmm. Very good. So I'm going to take a quick look at this because we did some. Oh yeah, it looks like some of the, some of it stayed. That's perfect. Um, the first and um, one of the things I considered was well the reviews i looked at his reviews and what people said about him and then i looked at the reviews on the specific procedures that i wanted done and his uh, the outcomes i looked on the page um the page but talking to him is um was one of my biggest things that made me pick him i was really comfortable talking to him and i don't even have a male gynecologist look at me so the fact that he made me feel comfortable was one of the key factors in picking him. He was really, really, really nice. As a matter of fact, because you know, we tighten up the muscle with the tummy tuck, so a lot of people say that they can't eat a lot. Yeah. Which is good. Beauty is from the inside, because you can look like anything on the outside and still be ugly on the inside, so. Okay, so we'll see you next week, and after that, I'll give you a break. Okay. All right. Happiness is something that you, I mean, I don't know, that's a whole happiness, because my kids make me happy. Uh, my definition it would be my kid. We'll make it out and fall in love tonight. Ain't nothing needed but us feeling right. Just take a chance, we got a wild ride. Wait and see, you and me, we were meant to be. We were meant to be. We were meant to be. So a good pizza is a pizza that has a nice crust, you know, like fluffy, and it's not burned, but it's also crispy from outside. And then the middle of it is just kind of soft. I think this parchment paper makes the job a lot easier. I think the art of living to be happy is to be able to find uh, joy in little things like this. Don't wait for huge stuff to happen to be happy, so I'm pretty excited. <laughs>
So this process of uh, two years, uh, it was very educational uh, for me, especially spiritually because you know, it puts you um, uh, in a lot of stress and tension and uh, unknown. And in every step, I uh, learned and someone came and helped me and it was really a great uh, life lesson for me. So I'm uh, writing a book about those uh, two years. It's almost done. I actually finished it, but I'm going back and then rewriting it. So I'm excited about this uh, to be able to share it, especially with, with my uh, kids and my patients and uh, see how they think. But the name of the book, first it was a two-year journey, but then I'm thinking about uh, maybe name it as a journey, two-year journey to the center of the self. Uh -huh, Ashpaz. Uh, I told them. Ashpaz in Farsi, the chef. There's a reason they call it Ashpaz. That means the person who knows how to make Ash, right? <laughs> but I mean, uh, not everybody can do Ashpazi. Uh, because it's really one of the toughest things to make. A lot of people think that it's easy now, but it's very hard. So for, for this type of bread, the sourdough bread, you, you actually want the flour to be liquidy, right? So you want it to be uh, not too hard. And you see how easy this is? Maneuver, you know, you can stretch it easily. I don't want to make it too thin. Way ran in there, and you grab this. And you just flip it. And you see how nice and liquidy it's gonna be? So it's gonna be soft inside and crusty, hopefully, outside. So this is a very interesting way of making sourdough bread. Instead of artisan sour, sourdough, this actually, I've learned back home as well. So you make a little bit of uh, gravy-like flour and water and you put a little bit of saffron if you want, you put a little bit of uh, uh, honey, actually let me put a little bit of honey, so just a tiny bit, so you just a little bit, that's it. This is a, a sourdough bread, we call it barberi, uh, but the interesting thing about it is that um, a lot of uh, bakers when they make sourdough they make that artisan or baguette. So this is an easier way to make it, uh, nice and flat. And then you see how all of this, this is like a crust with the air, pocket of air in, inside. Um, so we put some sesame oil and sesame seed, and you can just put however, whatever you like. And what I really like is at the bottom, you see this color thing? This is a uh, wheat bran, sabus. You know, the skin, the bran part of the wheat. Apparently it's very good for you. So this is uh, put on the bottom. That gives a special taste. Maybe I'll take my chef hat off and then go for the Christmas. all the air, the sourdough gas, you see? See all that puffiness? since 2012. She's one of our favorite patients here. Um, she has very uh, realistic expectations. Um, she's done um, 
puts her lips in the past, she's done filler in the past, and she comes um, every three months to do her Botox injections. And she's here today to do her um, glabella area, which is basically um, between the eyebrows, the 11s that most people get, and also her crow's feet, the lines around the eye. So let's go and um, fix her up. My name is Marlene Belloli. I came to Jungle Image when I was uh, 30. I'm going to be 48. Well, this procedure helped me to feel better about my lips. Um, I had a very thin lips and I was a little bit shy to put lipstick on and stuff like that. Now I just, I don't even need a lipstick. <laughs> My belief is, as a nurse, as a medical professional, you never know it all. So I personally go through trainings every six months. Every training that off, like comes up, any either uh, the ones that I have to pay for or the ones that the um, you know the, the companies, the filler companies, the injection companies offer, I never say no. So go ahead and make a mad face. Like look mad, like show me. So this is what she doesn't like. She doesn't like these 11. So we're gonna relax the muscle here. That's what Botox says. We're gonna relax the muscle. Go ahead and make a mad face again. Yeah. So she, once the, the product kicks in, she won't be able to make that mad face. So it's these 11, the lines that was showing before, it's gonna be gone. And then go ahead and smile big. So all these lines, all these lines here, they're all gonna be gone. So basically Botox, what it does, it, mus it relaxes the muscles. And that's what we're gonna do for her. All these years, every time, that I go to these trainings, I learn something new. So I believe that if you get to a point that you think you know it all, I just I just don't think you are a professional person anymore. I'm sorry, but you're doing amazing. All right, we're done with that. So working with your husband literally 24 seven, it's not an easy job. What we've decided is when we go home, we just don't talk about the office anymore. We don't talk about the problems we have at the office, problems with the staff, problems with patients. If anything, we just don't talk about it. We don't talk about financials of the practice, nothing. So our rule is that as soon as we get home, we are husband and wife, we are mom and dad, and we are no longer business owners. So around the eye is very vascular, so it's very important to try not to hit any veins as much as possible. So you don't give patient any bruising. So, so far so good, there's no bleeding here. When I come here, I feel like I'm home, like it's so comfortable. You are good to go. So as you know, this is gonna take anywhere from two days all the way up to 10 days to start taking effect. You've been there, done that, so you know the routine. <laughs> And also doing around the eyes, what's gonna do is also gonna lift up her brows a tiny bit too. When you inject around here, it's gonna help with lifting the brows as well. And she's gonna get that too. All right, my dear, you're all done. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I feel like I come here to my house. I'm really comfortable. The girls knows me. She knows me, her husband too. But he's never, he's always on the other he's side. He's always, I know. So it's really nice. Arsha's personality with her clients, a beautiful thing to see. She truly cares. She comes from the ER. She is a badass. Can I say that? She's a badass mm. nurse. <laughs> Beep. All right, that's trouble. I feel that trouble. Thank you for watching. And until the next episode, be the best version of yourself that you the can be. Of Class and Steve.